Yo, what's up? This is Rockland. Today on Passport Kings, we're going over the top five countries in South America with the most exotic women. Engage. I'm Rockland. I travel the globe making videos and recommending destinations. Join me so we can discover, preview, and book your next vacation. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. Subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all the other videos you may like. In South America, most people are descendants from Africans and have a little bit of European and indigenous American mixed in. The term exotic stems from this mixture, and although it is not a love story when tracking how these women came about, they do make up a facet of the African diaspora. The African diaspora used to mean places in the world where Africans ended up through slave trades and global sailing. But as time is going on, more and more people are coming to the understanding that a lot of these black women who were forcibly mixed are many times actually indigenous to these places. Yet, many of them did arrive from Africa into North and South America. The Middle East, Asia, and Australia also have a history of beautiful, exotic, melanated women. But South America and the islands have always been revered as the land of the most beautiful, exotic women. So here are five places that you should go to find the most beautiful, exotic, melanated women in South America. Number five, Argentina. According to Argentina National Census of the year 2017, the total Argentine population is 40,117,196, from which 149,493 are of African ancestry. These exotic women from Sub-Saharan Africa verified that 5% of the population knew of black African ancestry, and the other 20% thought it was possible but were not sure. Number four, Peru. Afro-Peruvians make up about 3 to 4% of the population, close to 2 million people. The Afro-Peruvian women resides mainly on the central and south coast. Afro-Peruvians can also be found in significant numbers on the northern coast. Recently, it has been verified that the community with the greatest concentration of Afro-Peruvian women is Yapatara and Moropon and that made up around 7,000 farmers who are largely descendants of African slaves from Madagascar. They are referred to as Malgachis or Mangachis. The women love their music and culture, and each year on June 4th, they celebrate a day of Afro-Peruvian culture. Like in America with hip hop, the Afro-Peruvian culture has not only thrived, but influenced all aspects of Peruvian culture without any acknowledgement from mainstream media or history. But when it comes to exotic women, they are beautiful and as diverse as the women here. Number three, Venezuela. The African Venezuelan women are mostly descendants of enslaved Africans brought to Venezuela from the 17th to the 19th century to work the coffee and cocoa crops. Most of the exotic women in Venezuela live in the North Central region and the coastal towns, but also in several towns and villages in the areas in the Zulia state. They have kept their traditions and culture alive. Venezuelan women are very racially mixed, which makes it difficult to individually identify and or distinguish their ethno-racial background with precision. But when it comes to those conversations, I just refer back to calling them black. Why? Because they are. Their features are filled with melanin. And research in 2001 on genetic diversity by the Venezuelan Institute of Scientific Research said the population was compared to the historical patterns of the colonial caste. Right now, only 2.8% of the country's population identifies with afro descendientes of the national total, which is about 181,157. And a lot of them will deny it, even though they have obvious African roots. Most Venezuelans have some sub-Saharan African heritage and are pardo, even if they identify as white. However, most of them do not describe themselves as Afro-Venezuelan, but as Latinos or Hispanics or simply Venezuelans. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by what used to be called travel hacking, but is correctly named award stacking. Save thousands of dollars on flights while rapidly improving your credit. Personally, this system has changed my travel life. Right now, the system is over 50% off. Click the link above and start traveling nonstop for so much less. <laughs> Number two, Colombia. Afro-Colombian women make up about 10.6% of the population, 
Almost 4.9 million people, according to the National Administration Department of Statistics. Most of them are in the Northwest Caribbean coast and the Pacific coast in places like Choco, although considerable numbers of them are in Cartagena, well, Cartagena. Approximately 4.4 million Afro-Colombians actively recognize their own black ancestry as a result of interracial relations with indigenous Colombians and the barbaric relationships with whites. They have been historically absent from high-level government positions. Many of their long-established settlements around the Pacific coast have remained underdeveloped. Afro-Colombian women have played a role in contributing to the development of certain aspects of Colombian culture. For example, several of Colombia's musical genres, such as cumbia, have African origins and influences. The good thing is a lot of Afro-Colombian women are black and they're proud of it. And number one, Brazil. Brazil has the most black people in their country outside of Africa. Afro-Brazilians make up more than half of the Brazilian population. And with that comes some of the most beautiful women you will ever meet in the world. A lot of Afro-Brazilian women are very proud of the melanin coursing through their skin. This melanin is why they are considered the most exotic women in the world. If you ever want to meet the most exotic looking women in South America, there is no other place like Brazil to find that woman. This country is internationally known for its women. If you're not sure about visiting this place because of the horror stories you heard in the media, go down there during carnival. The media may steer you away from visiting this country. They'll tell you about the crime, they'll tell you about drugs, and they'll tell you about the poverty. But what a lot of them won't tell you is that Brazil has more of an African population than the United States does. All right, so the question of today is, does exotic and the term mixed belong in the same conversation? African Americans, although also mixed, will usually never try to keep ownership of the nationality of the people who decimated our ancestors and did unspeakable acts to them. So why do people from other black cultures consider themselves mixed while everyone else will only acknowledge them as black? To me, all black women and people are exotic. After others have attempted to commit genocide on us, we still survived and to me are the most beautiful people on the planet. Just because we got off of different boats in the Americas does not make us a different people. It's where you got on the boat that matters. And as I've said before, all of Africa should be considered one country with the current countries as states. And from what I hear, they are currently working to make that happen. I believe once that happens, that powerhouse called Africa will make us all a lot more proud to be from there. And yo, remember, exotic without melanin is not really exotic at all. Melanin is one of the most main factors when it comes to exotic. So make sure you get your melanin counted like a king of passports, king. Peace.